Dearly beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, welcome to this series again. And we thank God for every opportunity. I'm holding in my hands the word of God, which was written for our energizement in all situations. We have been talking about the men and women in the word of God that give us um, challenge, that give us lessons, that as members in the church of Christ, we can be able to follow by example. And the people that we've been talking about are the judges, the men and women that led the people of Israel shortly after they settled in the land of Canaan. And after the death of Joshua, many things happened and the period that followed was a period of uncertainty. And historians talk about this season as a season that lasted for close to 300 years. And they were talked about as years of darkness, years of uncertainty, very many things happening. But God kept raising men and women that would lead his people in those situations, in this, those challenges. And so we've been talking about the judges after the death of Joshua, and these judges did a lot of work. We have shared about several of them, Ehud, um, Deborah, we have talked about Samson, we have talked about Jephthah, we have talked about Gideon. And those were called major, major judges, the men that exhibited uh, power, the men that exhibited wisdom to judge the people of God. And I've not forgotten Samson. Samson was another one. And so we have been talking about those men. And just like I've said before, I say it again, that we read about these biblical figures. We derive our lessons from them. And so that whatever they did that was good, that pleased God, you and I can also learn and please God. Because in the pleasing God, there are blessings. But also, if there is anything that they did because they were human like us, call them mistakes, call them backsliding. Whatever happened, and it happened to them in a negative way, we also pick lessons, you and I, that we can live our life. And so that if there is any mistake, if there is any error that we perform, that we can run back to our God, our Father, who is ever ready to forgive us. And so I've been talking about those great men and women. And now there is another lot of them, the judges. They are called minor judges and they have been put in one bracket. And so I just want us to dive into there and share about a few of those and then some lessons that I and you can pick. And so that when we live our life during our generation, during our time, there can be something that we leave behind. They were minor in a way, and but they were people that left a mark on the lives of the Israelites. And so the minor judges are the ones that we're talking about this time round. And they mentioned, I've written them in my book here, Ibuzan is one of them, Elon and Abdon, Shamugar, and they were little known men, little known, that's why they're called minor. And so we pick something from them that as you talk about Shamgar, as you talk about Tola, as you talk about Jair, as you talk about Ibzan that I mentioned, as you talk about Abdon, Othniel, and the rest, we pick our lessons from them. And this is still in the book of Judges, is what we are looking at now. And so God, in his infinite power, raised men that had great names, they had great power, and they exerted their influence over the people, and the people of God were saved. But then we also learn that actually in as much as there were great men, there were also lesser known men, the ones that I was talking about, that even them we can learn. That actually God used them in their smaller way, in their minor way, but they are great men that have remained known, remained on the scene. And so in our situations, even during our times, we have people that have great names and they're well known. God is using them. But also we have all those that are less known, but they are doing great things. And so in as much as God uses great men, 
great women whose names are all over the place, but there are those that under the curtain, but they are doing God's work. And so we focus on this greatness, but also focus on the minor. And something that, you know, why Jesus uses a mustard seed, the smallest seed in the world. There are some people who are like a mustard seed, little known, but they have something that they have uh, put in the place that can be reckoned with. And so well known, not well known, but they have left a mark. Now, I just desired to just keep mentioning their name and something that they did, and so that you and I can pick something from them. Because in, in as much as they were minor, something that they did for Israel at that time. And what about us during our time, you and I? What will you be remembered for? And that, for me, that's the point. What will you be remembered for by your family? What will you be remembered for by your church? What will you be remembered for when you are gone? Will there be anything good that people remember you about, remember you for? And so this is something. And one judge who is a minor is called Shamgar. Shamgar, we read about him in chapter 3, verse 31, the book of Judges. And this man, in chapter 3, verse 31, the Bible talks about him in this way, that after the other one called Ehud, Shamgar, the son of Anat, who killed 600 Philistines with an ox god, and he also saved Israel, pray the Lord. He saved Israel, minor, but he saved Israel. And Shamgar used what he had in his hand. And an ox, an ox god is a sharp stick that is they use to drive the oxen when they are doing the work. And this stick, which is used to drive the oxen, is what Shamgar used to save the people of Israel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, this is the point. From time immemorial, God had been using men and women. He used Moses. Now, when Moses was being taken to go and save Israel, he was a nobody. And he had the things that he said. But God asked him, what is it that is in your hand? And so using what he had, using what Moses had in his hand, Moses pronounced and said, I have a staff, a stick, a shepherd's staff. So God used Moses' shepherd's staff to save the people of Israel. During the time of David, great man, big man, Gadol in Hebrew, great, big, giant, Goliath, with all his weapons, God used David's ceiling that he used and saved the people of Israel. Now this, from Shamgar, we learn that what he had in his hands, God used it to save the people of Israel. Moses, we have talked about him. David, we have talked about, and maybe other people that were there. And so this is the point that, what is it that God wants to use that you have? So what you have, whatever little, whatever small, God can use it to accomplish great things for his people. And this is a great lesson that we pick, we, the men and women who are living during our generation. Sometimes we can underrate ourselves. Sometimes we can say, but I'm a nobody. But Shamgar saved the people of Israel and God used him using what he had. And so that's important that you and I can also leave a mark on our family, on our church, on our nation, in our smallness. May God use you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, another judge, minor, but great man, is called Tola. This one judged Israel for close to 23 years, long time. And Tola means something minor, something like a worm. And David many times called himself like a worm. You know, it's something that is not strong enough. But Tola, in Judges chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, the Bible also talks about this man. Tola, after Abimelech, there arose to save Israel, Tola, the son of Pua, son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he lived at Shamir in the hill country of Ephraim, and he judged Israel for 23 years. You know? And they're mentioning son of, son of, and that is a lineage. 
meaning actually the parents kept leaving behind sons and you know children that would continue with their name and so he came to rescue and he regained the lost ground for the people of Israel so we need to restore order from our decency from the people that we have you know we have come from we also leave a mark so he showed the people what greatness is he helped them to actually achieve it and this man told her, little known but 23 years he was leading the people and he left a mark on the people of Israel so humility matters friends in his humility he served the people and in first peter chapter 5 verse 5 god opposes the proud but he gives grace to the humble praise the lord and so in his humility tola did great work and so from this you and i need to learn something that as we keep descending from you know from one lineage to another from the parents coming down we need to keep preparing our children so that actually our line can continue and they kept mentioning son of son of and so in this judges chapter 10 the man tola also served israel and left a mark in his minorness in his being lesser known he did great things and so you may be there asking yourself what can i do what can i leave but try the fear of the lord will enable you the favor of the lord will enable you to do something for your people now this is tola one of the minor judges and I just have said they had their own weaknesses, but they left a mark on their own people, their own people. Now, another one is called Jaya, following closely after Tola in Judges chapter 10, verses 3 and to 5. That after Tola came Jaya, the Gileadite, who judged Israel for 22 years and had 30, 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys and they had 30 cities called by name there Havoth Jaya to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jaya died and was buried in Carmon. You see, he judged, he led, but God gave him also a family, many children, they're talking about 30. And so something that I learned is actually we need to take our family serious and when you're a father when you're a mother it is something actually when you go you see this man with his 30 sons and 30 cities meaning actually they were leaders meaning that he was a leader but his sons were also leaders so i pray that actually god will enable us friends as we go on propagating the gospel but we propagate it with our children with our household joshua does it very well and he says that I and my family will serve the Lord. You know, Jaya, I mean, this man here, Jaya did the same with his 30 sons, and he did great things. He, so he maintained the legacy from his predecessor, and he continued doing this for that period. So God blessed Jaya with his children, riding on 30 donkeys for the administration of the villages. May God bless you and watch over you with your family. And so that something will be left. And as you move in this direction of greatness, your children are also moving in this direction of greatness. Jaya was doing that. And I have picked this greatly. How I pray, we, we who are parents, to pray for our children, that as you go up, they also go up with you. Pray the Lord. And Joshua says, I and my family will serve the Lord. Now Jaya does the same. And maybe another that we, shall, we are going to look at. And so those who inherit peace, wealth, must guard against complacency. So these children inherited from their father, Jaya. I want to appeal to the children, the young people, when there is any blessing that has been left behind, wealth, you know, the name, very, very important that you guard it. Guard the name of your, if there are great men, they are great churchmen, they are great in politics, they are great in business, they are great teachers, they are great lawyers, they are great what? And they made the name. I want to appeal to everyone. I want to appeal to you. Uphold the name. Now, yes, children did that. That when you inherit, avoid complacence. Otherwise, actually, if you go, if you become complacent, become reckless, 
then the name disappears, the wealth disappears, the reputation disappears. But these ones, we are learning that we need to walk in the light of the Lord. And you and I are the people that God is calling. Now, another judge is called Ibuzan. And also, the same way, like Jaya, God blessed him with 30 sons, can you imagine? And 30 daughters. And here they're mentioning sons and daughters. There are some people who still think that your daughters uh, were not mentioned much in the Bible. Look in this uh, Judges chapter 12, verses 8 to 10, that he had 30 sons and 30 daughters. He managed his household well. Just like Jaya, so is Tola. So is Ibzan. And so he managed. And so Paul does advise about our household management. And in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 4 to 5, from this man, Jaya and Ibzan, we pick this, that anybody who wants to be a leader of the church, in whichever capacity, that he must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive, pray the Lord. And this is important for you and me, that as we, we yearn for leadership, this is the point. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? So Ibuzan gives us a lesson here with his 30 sons and 30 daughters, and this is the great thing that they are doing here. Manage them well. So bring themselves and others to full potential. Parent and your children. Children and your parents coming to full potential and living in one accord. These days we have a challenge. Sometimes children going this way, parents are going, parents are on this, children are on this. But look at this man, Ibzan, with his children. Look at Jaya with his children actually administering together. We pray that actually there will always be unity in your family. And so that actually your name continues being propagated, being continuing on and may God keep you and, prov and uh, provide for you his favor upon you. Now, in the other one, actually there are two more or three, but I want to mention Elon. Elon is another judge. Judges chapter 12, verses 11 to 12. He was a stronger one. He was a pillar. A leader must be strong. I have discovered this in my own practice, in my own, but you need the moments when you need to be a stronger person. When others are falling off, the last person to fall must be a leader. Yes, many things can be breaking you. Many, many activities might be breaking you, but you need to remain strong. So Elon, in Genesis, in, in Judges chapter 12, verses 1 to 12, he was a stronger one, but gentle. And uh, God blesses gentility. And so may he bless you. Be strong, but gentle before the Lord. There are some people who exhibit strength, yes, but they're arrogant. Be strong, but, be strong, but gentle. And the final one that I'm mentioning is called Abdon. Abdon means or refers to service. And we read about him in Judges chapter 12, verse 13 to 15. He also had children, 40 sons, 30 grandchildren all riding on 70 donkeys because there were 70. Now he was a servant leader. Greatness lies in service to others. I want to appeal to us that from this man, Abdon, a servant, Av, Abdon, a servant, that God uses you and God calls all church leaders, God calls all political leaders to be servant leaders. Our Lord Jesus Christ exhibits the same. Now, with his children, with his grandchildren, my prayer really is that as we serve, our children will follow suit. As our children follow suit, our, great, our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and the name goes down, down, down to the fourth and fifth generations. Because this is what we are seeing from Avdon, the service of the Lord. So down to grandchildren. So we pass on something good. Pass on the wealth. Pass on the greatness. Pass on the reputation. My prayer to God in heaven is that actually from this man, 
the judges that I've mentioned from the time we started this series. And we're winding up with these 12 men. I mean, with these six or so men, this leaves us a great lesson. And of course, in time to come, we shall be looking at another judges that are not purely mentioned in the book of judges, but they're also judges in their own right. But these were men and women who were small. They were small islands because I've been talking about minor prophets, minor judges, smaller islands. But may they teach us a lesson in our smallness, in your less knownness, because you may be less known, but behind the curtains, in the periphery, do something that will be counted on your shoulders. We have leaders who are up, but also those leaders also who are in deep in the villages. They are less known, but they support the work of ministry. We have church hierarchies. We have people who do little work in, in their own locations, but they support the whole ministry going up. And so we pray for those people that they support the ministry. And those who are up, also support the ministry from where they are in their greatness and those support ministry in their lowliness, wherever they are. But we also find that these men purposed to leave a legacy, purposed to do work for God. And so may you do the same in the ministry of apostasy, fallenness that we are in, chaos that we are in, the violence that we are in, the fallenness, People are backslidden. The faith is growing cold. But we pray that the Lord will use you and my and me to do great work with our, with our families and with our children. Name them ever around us. And so may we keep the faith. May you keep, remain, may you keep standing. Remain standing. Don't be discouraged. God who was with this man will be with you. And he's with us. And so friends, I thank God that I've read about these men in their minorness. You know, they, they are called minor judges. We have mentioned Shamgar. We have mentioned Tola. We have mentioned Jaya. We have mentioned Ibzan. We have mentioned Elon. We have mentioned Avdon. We have mentioned now these men. What amazes me is their family along with them. And so friends, May God, who used them, use you. That your name will be carried on. That your service will be known. And that the people of God will be blessed. God told Abraham that through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And may you be through you, that all the people that are around you will be blessed. In the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.